Yo, what is going on and welcome to another episode of the Urban Pitch Podcast, the beautiful game of life, part of the Believe Network. I am Ramzi Abushala, editor of UrbanPitch.com, the co-executive directors of Vibes. To my left, Bridget Flores, Julio Matarosa, what's going on? It's another solo episode. Solo dolo, that's how we roll. Yeah, that's how we roll. That's how, that is how we roll. I mean, this is three in a row. Three P. Three in a row. Yeah. Three P. Yeah, yeah. Um, what have y'all been up to though? Uh, Bridget, I seen you were at a complex con last weekend. How how, how did that yes, go? Yes, sir. Um, believe it or not, this is the first time that I've ever attended complex con. Have you guys been before? Uh, never, never. Never. Been. Oh, okay. So it was my first time. Um, super dope. Um, shout out to one of my coworkers who hooked me up with the ticket. We were able to get another ticket as well. So me and Jess went out there, and um. We had a great time. We weren't able to do the two day, uh, but it is a two day event, Saturday and Sunday. We attended on Saturday. Um, We waited, I think almost an hour and like 15 minutes in line just to get get our wristband. That's crazy. And then on top of that, you have to go and make line to get in. But luckily by the time we had to go to the second line to get in, uh, there was no line. Um, But yeah, it was packed. Like when I tell you, and this was us showing up at like one got in like around 2 45 3 and um there was the line still wrapping like blo- like i would say like it felt like a block from where the the event was which is That's just nuts. just to That's say wild. how yeah how yeah. how popular it was <laughs> i know um but i will say that it was worth it i we showed up, walked in, and it was super dope. I was telling Jess that it felt like this is like our Disneyland as grown-ups. Like, mm. this is the type of stuff like you wait in line for. Right. This is the type of stuff you go and like you do a whole day out of. Yeah. Um, it was super sick. There was just so much of everything. So much fashion, culture, music, vibes, swag, um, limited edition things. A lot of celebrities were out there. It felt like um, just like the epitome of what complex stands for and like Mm -hmm. the culture behind it um it was super dope i had a chance to see a lot of different like i've seen i think the best part too was that i got to me and jess were talking about how like we got to see people there that we haven't seen in a while or that we just like bumped into but also people that we know that have built their brands and are now like running their their brand so like for example get a rodeo this is the first Mm -hmm. time that they were out there so that was super dope to see their installation um the installations are amazing. Like people are so creative, you and have we're to be, right? yeah, yeah, super be, yeah. because it's like a two day event. It's like your one in a lifetime chance to showcase your brand to people that maybe fly out here to go to mm-hmm. these events. And we were talking to a few people who had installations, and they were saying that it takes a lot. Like it's crazy. Like you're running off of like little to no sleep, but it's worth it. Um, it is tiring, obviously, but it's just like you could see the effort that's put into it. There's just so many different installations like I could share, but um, some of them that like come to the top of my head are um, there was a really cool one. I think it was called the brand was like Slow Jams and they were like literally had a the whole DJ set up and they had the vibes like all oh, the R&B. Yeah, yeah. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. The holiday season is off and rolling with NFL in full stride and the NBA and NHL hitting mid-season form. Bet Online is your number one destination for all your sports wagering info. With up-to-the-minute sports wagering news, odds, trends, and predictions, Bet Online is the top spot for everything pro and amateur sports. And not just the big four, Bet Online has info available at your fingertips with both desktop and mobile access at any time for almost any sport that's played from MMA to international soccer. Head to Bet Online today and remember to use our promo code BELIEVE, that's B L E A V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, where the game starts. Vibes. Yeah, I know, I know. I follow them on Instagram. Yeah, yeah dude, yeah, yeah. They, they were sick. They do like a bunch of like uh, vinyl shows mm-hmm. um, out here in like the arts district. I yeah, think, too. yeah, it was super dope. They had they had the vibes that they had the R and B music. Y'all yeah. would have vibe there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it feels so it feels so fun and like it just you want to buy something because like you want to be you want to take that vibe mm-hmm. that memory with right. you and I feel like that every installation had that kind of feeling like in their own way. Um, it was really cool also because there was a lot of there was a few soccer you know footy um, installations as well so that was cool to see i think um there was one that was from new york i think it's like soccer tees or soccer tea i'm not Mm -hmm. i might be chopping up the name but that was one and they were like branding some of their uh kits that they have there was um, uh, la galaxy was there 
Um, the they ops. did the ops is there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they did their thing or whatever. Um, but it was cool because as you're there, like not only is it just like installations, it's there's so much going on. Like music's playing, celebrities are popping out left and right. Um, they have panels going on, they have Q and A's, and they have those going live for people that aren't there to see. And then they have music artists performing, and there's like a skate rink, rink mm -hmm. in the back, and there's like a thrifting store in the back, and then there's hella food. It's just insane. Like I'm telling you guys, when I say it's like a Disneyland for us, it's like literally that. It was super sick. Uh, but the thing that stands out to me was uh, there's a section. There was a section called Soul to LA. And um, a friend like of mine, Seoul, like Korea, Seoul? like Korea, yeah. yeah, like Korea, Seoul, Seoul to LA. And my friend was telling me that it was like um, this guy, I can't remember his name, but he uh, brought a few Korean brands out here to, to have to pop up their installations. And it was just literally like different booths off from Korea. And one of them was Over the Pitch, which yeah. is a soccer yeah, yeah, yeah. brand based in Korea. And they had all their collabs and I got to talk to the guy who oversees um, over the pitch and another Korean brand that was there was like a golf one. Mm. And it was just super dope to see like the community there. And like there was like so many people just like showing up and you're just like, whoa, like this is out in Korea and like you have it out here in L.A. It was really, really dope. Mm. It was super sick and it was just a vibe. And I would definitely want to do it again next year. I think we should go next year. All right, yeah, Who knows? Maybe we we'll see more footy culture out there. I don't yeah. know about that one hour wait though. Yeah. Hey, we'll we'll, <laughs> we'll we'll pull up with the media pass. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We'll yeah, figure we'll something out. We'll make no no. We'll make badges. Like yo, we can't wait in this line. Look at this badge. Look at, and then hey, but they I, won't. You yeah, know, they'll, they have no choice but to let us in. Yeah, That's, you, I think. you know who I am. If you if you <laughs> act like you know what you're doing and then like you know, gonna, then they're gonna be like yeah. Bet. Nine times out of ten, they'll be like yeah okay. Or or you know what we do? We come with a ladder. Have you yeah. seen that? Like yeah. people let you anywhere. Oh, let shit, you no in anywhere. Way. You just have a ladder and like a hard hat and a, and a vest. We'll carry the little like you know the belts that have all the yeah. tools. Yeah, no, like speaking of Disneyland, like people got into Disneyland without no having a way. ticket. They just had a ladder and they they They're let like, them in. We're here to fix some. So I feel like stuff. that's yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a move. That's the yeah, move. Yeah. Hey, we you invest in buying a ladder and you leave it at Disneyland or you leave it at the event. Yeah. yeah. There it is. That's, that's your ticket in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, granted, we did get there late. We got there like at one thirty. Yeah. <laughs> I never show up late. But, yeah, but like it's crazy how like just seeing like just on Instagram seeing how much like the presence of the of these foodie uh foodie brands like it's crazy that all how, how it went from like nba players using uh, basketball jerseys now to soccer vintage soccer jerseys being part of the coach yeah. which you wouldn't see it back then so this mm -hmm. is great seeing how the sports is growing how all this soccer is coming to the u.s is helping the uh soccer space grow from if i mean uh soccer uh uh, conventions that are happening all right. over the U.S. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. I, it, I'm enjoying how the, how much is this, this sports is growing in the U.S. right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, we just did a feature on on the site on on Laundry, which is a uh, like a vintage sports store located in, in Portland. And one of our contributors, Evan Taylor, he works there. And mm -hmm. um, he was talking to the owner, Chris Park, um, Chris Yen. Sorry, Chris Yen. And he. Um, no, I mean, no, no. and he was basically saying when they first started in 2017, it was mostly basketball focused because I was they're based in Portland. I was the year I think the Trailblazers had a good year that year. They, they might have went to pretty deep in the playoffs. Um, but then, you know, what year? 2017. I think that might have been the, the, the year that they went to the conference finals against. Oh, Golden when they did a little step back on Paul George. Uh, it might have been that year and it might have been. I'm not sure. I'm not. In, I'm not. In, Side yeah, step. yeah. Yeah. The the the, the Dame time original. Um, mm -hmm. But he was saying how it evolved from, you know, being basketball focused. And then as soccer culture started to grow after the 2018 World Cup and a lot of things um, started to, you know, move it became a lot more soccer, like a lot of their stuff that they have, you know, they have a you know, really good selection of Arsenal jerseys, you know, um, they have the League MX jerseys there. So he, he said that, you know, you could just see the shift in the the culture in what he was selling and what was selling at the store. So, yeah. um, you know, it's 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 cool to see. And, um, you know, who knows, maybe next year we'll be there. Hopefully they'll be, um, as, as we get closer to 2026, you know, um, more and more brands. I was, I was talking to, um, um, our guy Neron at, at the Concept Club, uh, they do a bunch, they're based in London, they do a lot of, you know, really cool, uh, um, you know, concept jerseys and, and they make their own, you know, uh, apparel. 
and he shows up to a sneaker con every year. Mm. And so he was in Anaheim earlier and he was saying, you know, he's, he's trying to get in, in the door in the U S because 2026 comes and who, who knows, like it, there's going to be a, a, a even bigger shift than what we've seen. So, yeah. um, it's interesting to see for sure. And, and, you know, things like that, where it's like events with cultural significance, like complex con or sneaker con or, or, or whatever mm-hmm. it is. Now we have footy con, um, mm-hmm. that, that was going on in, in Miami. Oh, um, oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> um, I feel like that's going to grow and eventually come out to L.A. And like, I think we need that. Right. I yeah, think we do. Yeah, I think we yeah. have a lot of small business, big businesses, just people doing things for the culture of footy to mm-hmm. grow it. Yeah. And like you said, that's going to, you know, um, blend into what will come in 2026. Yeah. A lot of creators as well, especially most of them are in New York, but there's a lot. There's, yeah. there's a few that LA, have a LA big... Big space in that influencers, sports, uh, soccer influence, um, and they all they are based from here. Eli is one of them. Um, yep. Soccer hub, like uh, yeah, LA soccer hub. LA Geo. soccer hub. Yeah, so we, we have a lot of creators on Cabra this side. Sports, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. Cabra, Cabra sports. Yeah, a lot of creators here that um, definitely come out. Most likely going to see is there. Even yeah. us, we'll, um, we'll put us in that space as well. Yeah, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, and, and then you see like it's it's a mix of. Like even like the quote unquote big influencers, you see a lot of them are getting into golf and a lot of them are getting into soccer. Mm-hmm. So like those are the two sports, that especially that we're doing both, and we're doing both <laughs> uh, at at you know different levels, different at levels. varying <laughs> levels. You know, some days it's really good, some days you know, yeah, yeah, you know, not but, so good. But, but look, I've gotten better at it. Four. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, before before Julio was just like. <laughs> you just you just be looking over nervously like oh please don't hit him please don't hit him please don't hit him <laughs> um but I yeah i mean we're getting lingo, in on the etiquette yeah, yeah 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 we'll get you we'll get yeah. bridget on the con but on i'm the, sick of course, you know i'm sick of waiting for a world cup to feel the culture of yeah, footy yeah yeah i don't think that we're there anymore like i think that because like when i think about it like one of the biggest core memories for me was um when was it that the world cup was out here not out here but um 94 no 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 sorry <laughs> i was barely born yeah. <laughs> i felt it that that year yeah. no 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 there was um what was it like 20 um i can't remember what was the event like hold on it was no the world cup it okay. was like 20 something okay 2018 20, 2010 2014 or we 2018 had the, we had the Copa 20, America here, the Centenario. No, 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 but I it was wasn't. It was, it was the World, World Cup. Cup. It was just so the World Cup. So 2010 was in uh, South Africa. 2014 was Brazil. And it might have been the 2014 World Cup because there was a lot of parties no, going on. No, 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 2010. The 2010. 2010. You'd have been in Oh, no, no, the 2014 because I was in college. Yeah. So yeah. 2014 World Cup. Yeah. That one, I remember like when I was out here in um, on summer break, like I felt like there was a lot of like small pop-ups for the world cup Mm, and i enjoyed it and i had the time of my life and i was going to these events by myself but i enjoyed it and it was like a core memory for me and i feel like now we're at a place where like we can have that continuously like we don't have to wait for something big to come to feel that excitement to have those conventions or to have those events yeah but definitely and and now with with copa america coming to the u.s and uh next summer that's going to be something that i think could like Julio's mentioned this multiple times that could kickstart a lot of the you know the dominoes that are gonna eventually culminate with 2026 Mm -hmm. um and going into the 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 Copa America we just qualified um Mm -hmm. the the U.S. men's national team um last night it wasn't a convincing it wasn't the best it wasn't the best but but we're in um (laughs) Eugenio does get it together it was like that type of thing where it's like you get in trouble in school but they still let you you know somehow you walk across the stage right (laughs) yeah yeah, yeah, one of those one of those moments where it's just like you could still go to lunch, but what you did was in the yeah. first five minutes of that talk, you're just like, oh. And then you walk off with it, kind of smiling. Yeah. And, you know, you can't, you can't let them see that I'm you're still smiling. Out here, though. But yeah, yeah. When your pops so, tell you, I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. Right. So, so, uh, two legs against uh, Trinidad and Tobago in the Concacaf Nations League uh, quarterfinals, and so with the eight teams remaining, uh, the top. Uh, six of those six of those teams are gonna uh qualify for copa america so it's gonna be the four uh teams that advance and then two out of the four teams that lose are gonna play head to head so trinidad and tobago very much still in Mm -hmm. copa america um i don't know if it's gonna happen for them but um you know three zero win the first game it was 
not a convincing three three zero win as as the score would would show. Um, you know the the stats were very heavy heavily biased for the U.S.'s favor, but we didn't score first goal till like the eighty second eighty third minute, and, and then three. you know and then the, the three three came in, and the then um, game two. You're going to Trinidad and Tobago. You don't need a, a result like you did uh, five years one. ago um, mm -hmm. in 2017, where obviously you know we it was, things didn't go well. Um, but I think like 39 minutes in or 35 minutes in, Serginho Dest with a, just a really bizarre double yellow uh, like tantrum, basically. Just the frust frustration out of his part. Like, but as a player of his caliber, how important he is to this to this uh, project going forward. There's no reason for him to act that way, especially kicking the ball in the air. Mm -hmm. Something, yeah. something yeah. I, did it, I did it in middle school. But not. Right, you get chewed out for <laughs> yeah, that when yeah. you're 11 years old it's and you okay. do that. It's yeah. just like a, a bizarre thing to see in the pro sports space because you, you know like that's just such an inconvenience and also not okay at all. Right. Like it's, you learn, you get those out in like middle school, maybe high school, I'm sure. Like I highly doubt it. Yeah, my college, you should know now. But like, yeah. Like, don't don't get me wrong. And like I haven't cursed out a ref in my time. Right. But, like, but that's the first act you yeah, do. Yeah. Like honestly, like that's usually you say that towards the end. Like it was a bad game. We lost. It was a lot of questionable calls from the ref. Right. And then you do express your frustration. Sometimes it's not okay, but it happens. Yeah. But to do it like 26, 30 something. It was, I think it was twenty six minutes, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. yeah okay. Uh, twenty six minutes in, it's crazy, and then. Your teammates are trying to have your back and yeah. trying to be your brothers and get you out, get you out of that space. And on the way out, you're basically cursing all of them out, like, right. like they did something wrong. Yeah, like, yeah. Matt Turner had to shove them off the yeah. field. Like, I mean, it was a terrible look. And, and Reem, like, what, what a great to, captain. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like basically said, um, there, there, there's no, there's no, there's no uh, space in soccer, especially in U.S. soccer, for that. Um, he let down his brothers, especially his brothers in yeah. the field, and uh, just to, it, like, just to reinstate, like. He's one of the important pieces of this team. There's, th yeah, I, I, there's a lot of people saying he shouldn't come to the next window, and I highly agree. There's no reason, like, th th there has to be some punishment yeah. for his behavior. I mean, yeah, that's, that's, that's a fair punishment. I don't know if they will take that um, uh, to that extreme, but just to reiterate what you're saying, how big, how important he is to this team. Uh, he, he had an assist earlier. He assisted the first goal and then he, had, he got sent off in a red card. He was the first player to do that since he did it. <laughs> like, he does, no, he, he yeah. broke his own record. <laughs> yeah, so, so, um, oh, we can't be mad now. <laughs> right. I mean, so like, he's obviously very talented. Um, you know, he's played at, you know, some major clubs, not always, he didn't always have the, the most consistent minutes or he didn't show himself the best, but with PSV, he's back, back in his Good home graces, country, yeah. you know, and he's been playing much better. He's, he's looked, you know, himself. And he's been going a lot of up and downs. Barcelona basically yeah. did mess with his confidence just because yeah. um, uh, one week they love him, the next week they don't want him in the club. Right, mm -hmm. right. yeah. And then, I mean, as, as a wing back, his defending isn't, isn't, the great, isn't, isn't the greatest. He's very dynamic. He's a dynamic playmaker. You know, he can, he can do things very – and we've seen the goals that he's scored. I mean, he scored some bangers for, for the Co U.S. Freak, I believe, like uh, left-footed shot. It was yeah, crazy. yeah, yeah. So a lot of talent there, but we'd like to see more consistent. I think that's just a – microcosm for the entire u.s men's national team because we've been i mean basically since we started this podcast that's what we've been saying mm -hmm. like there's a lot of talent here but when are we going to put it all together when are we going to be consistent haven't really seen it i mean they had the great great win against ghana you know not they didn't look good against germany um you know middling they looked fine whatever they got the job done against uh Trinidad and tobago but now it's uh, nations league uh, semifinals and they're going to play the, the final or the third place game and then everyone's going to be looking ahead to, to Copa America. Um, so I mean where where do you guys see the U.S. and how they shape up against these South American teams in, in Cone Bowl? I think kind of like what you said like we, we're seeing a lot of like the the ugliness of the team come out since the beginning of this year like a little bit of yeah. last year going into this yeah. year um I think if you have to let it out this year, let it out all in 2023 <laughs> and leave it here because next year and then the years to come are going to be a testament to who they are as a team leading into the World Cup. And I think that they have a lot to show for themselves because people are questioning this USA team, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, like the men's team. Um, as far as what 
comparisons they have between the South American teams, they have, I mean, I think that that should say it all, right? Like, they have to be questioning themselves on that. Like, they have to reflect on what they're going to go up against, knowing that they made it into um, the semifinals for the, um, what is it, the Nations League? Yeah. It's like, are they Big reflecting deal. on that? You know, yeah, we have, we have quote-unquote, bigger fish to fry with these teams in South America. Um, I mean, obviously, Brazil and Argentina are the two giants. Yeah. But they then... They, they don't have a culture yet, just for the reason that... Who's actually the lead, that we've talked about this before in this podcast? Who's the leader of that team? We could you, you could argue Pelusas, you could argue uh, 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 Tim Weah or uh, McKinney, like you yeah. can argue all these. But who's really this leader? Um, who's a person that 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 people look into like for them to like hold them accountable? I feel like every, they they all came up at the wrong same time. They're all young, so they gotta find that person to be that Michael Jordan, that Kobe Bryant, that right. is gonna be in the locker room. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, and just basically hold everybody accountable because I think they're just being too buddy buddy and like they all think they're stars but they gotta get they're gonna get a reality check once they go to South America yeah. mm-hmm. and the pot of wire Chile just mm-hmm. knocks them out four right. zero so like I mean yeah. yeah yeah so I mean people are talking about top three finish at the you know Copa, uh, Copa America when I mean Uruguay is stacked mm-hmm. you you I mean even even like Chile Colombia Ecuador you know there those are no slouch teams like those yeah. you, you know like yeah. I don't. I don't know. If there's if there's any like Mexico and Canada are the two teams that they play consistently mm-hmm. that you know give them mm-hmm. that challenge. You know, you can throw Jamaica in there too, but none of those teams really stand up to uh, a, a Uruguay or even a, a, an Ecuador who have multiple players playing consistent minutes in the in the Premier League. Um, so what what would be like a realistic expectation for us? What is the where is the bar set? Because a lot of people are saying. You know, it's it's Brazil, it's or it's Argentina, it's Brazil, and then it's us, mm. um, which I don't think is very realistic. Cap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's cap. I think if they if they get it all together, they could get to a semifinal. Um, if they win, a That's semifinal. best case scenario. Yeah, best though. case scenario. But to be honest, I, uh, dang, it, it it's going to be hard for them just because the simple reason that they they are used to playing like uh, El Salvador, uh, Guatemala, right, Honduras, right. like. A lot of physical teams, but they're not as skilled. Like the, now, now you go to South America, and you're getting hit as much as you're getting hit in Central America, mm-hmm. but with way more dynamic players. Mm-hmm. And usually when they go to El Honduras, they go to El Salvador, they struggle because um, they don't want to get hit. But now you're, you're, you're going to get hit, and, you, and like, but that same team that can hit you can counterattack you with two touches and score right. a goal on you. Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to be hard. If their mentality is not correct, yeah. I don't think they're even going to get out the group stage. I think they need to... I think they need to understand, like, Argentina and Brazil are up here, and, like, there's possibilities that you can get there, but you have to focus on, like, the, the what is it called when you, like, the underrated teams, mm. you know? Like, obviously, Argentina and Brazil are big names, but it's, like, like you said, like, um, Uruguay is stacked, and yeah. that's a team that could potentially take them out. Um, it could be Chile, it could be Colombia. I think that they just have to recognize like what they're dealing with, like yeah. not just two teams, but like that whole all Every the teams team. that are there. Ecuador, Ecuador's having like they're their, their, gold, their golden yeah. era of mm-hmm. soccer right now. Mm-hmm. E- Ecuador gave Netherlands um, fits in, in in the World Cup, yeah, like so. you know, like um, it's it's gonna be. Every single game is going to be a challenge. Mm-hmm. It's not going to be like the, the Nations League where it's like you can sleepwalk into a 3-0 victory against a Trinidad yeah. or, you know, like you can just wait for and play till you know, fall asleep in the first 45 minutes, maybe make something happen. No, it's it's 0 to 90. You are playing full intensity. There's no slouch. There's no like you can't take any seconds off. And I think that's something that this team has, has definitely struggled to do. Yeah. Um, so I'm excited to see it because – there's all this talk about, you know, playing quality opponents and in CONCACAF, maybe that's that's difficult to do consistently. So I'm excited to see because now, I mean, they're young, but like, how young are they? Like, it's no. starting to get to a point yeah, where it's like, yeah, it's is. it's go time now. Like, they're starting to get into their mid-20s, mm-hmm. which is like, you know, the beginning of their primes. And they don't have that excuse of, oh, this team is, is young anymore. The future is, is starting now. to become now, yeah. you know? That's so, what I'm saying. Next year, next yeah. year, they're going to have to walk the talk and yeah. bring it on because what we see in the next couple of years is what we're expecting to see in the world cup yeah and yeah. it could be great or it could be just like hopeless mm. and like i haven't seen so much hype on a u.s team since that uh 
2012 Confederations Cup where uh, right. U.S. beat Spain on right. that first game. Right. Altidore had some good goals. Yeah. Um, so th there's a lot of expectations, especially with this team, especially with the quality of players. Like, all of them playing in Europe, all of them getting quality minutes in Europe, all these teams being, like, the top teams of their league. So if they don't figure it out soon, they're going to get a rude awakening. And mm -hmm. you don't want to see, like, because I'll, I'll, I'll bring their confidence now. You don't want to see a 4-0 to, like, Right. A bottle why? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and and to, to go back on the the intensity, like the intensity that South American teams play with is on another level than what we're probably used to. Because I mean, we're seeing today even the Brazil Argentina <laughs> like the, the cop. Oh my god! Like that was that's insane. Crazy. And that wasn't even the players. That was just the fans. It was the fans, no, and then the players, the and players then the too. Players, and well, then yeah, the, because yeah. they feed off that yeah, energy. Yeah, yeah. Debo got in and was like, "You ain't about to do Can that." Can you imagine bro? Like, the USA? They cannot take those hits. They'll cry. Yeah, it's <laughs> like who? Like who's cry <laughs> right I, yeah i mean like Concacaf has there's definitely a, a greediness to Concacaf where you're playing in hostile environments like um like you know honduras like a lot of the 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 national team players that we've had here say it's it's no joke playing mm -hmm. there because of the stadium intensity the the pitch environment like everything like that but this is a different level where even though we're going to be playing on our home turf in the u.s um, the the actual game being played by the players, not the fan environment, is going to be played at another level too. And yeah. this is the Copa America. This is ha actually has history. Whereas you know something like the Gold Cup, which is a prestigious tournament, we're sending out our, our B team to. Like, yeah, definitely. you know what I mean. That would be unheard of in in South America. Like yeah. no South American team is going to send uh, you know a subpar roster to a Copa America. You so, take a day off and you're getting smacked. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and maybe they have the depth to where they're quote unquote. You know, B roster might actually be a, an A roster too. So, um, yeah, this is you know, it's going to open up in Atlanta. The the venues were announced, and it's going to close out in Miami. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. Oh, you know, bye. the new yeah. stadium has to be built by then. The yeah. Miami stadium, right? An actual, or uh, it might be Hard Rock. I think it might oh. be. It might be. Hard I'm not sure. I'm not sure um, because it's not. It can't be Drive Pink, the the stadium that they're currently at, because that's still a temporary stadium. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's going to be at the Hard Rock Stadium, which is like where the Dolphins play. Um, so we'll see. And um, we'll, I, I'm excited to see the 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 traveling of the fans too, because I, I want there to be, um, even though it's going to be in the U.S., I want there to be like a you know. Um, a hostile environment i was just about to say that i yeah. wonder what the fan experience is going to look like or the fan base is going to look like because like what we saw happen with argentina and brazil like what are the chances that i mean i wouldn't want it to happen because it's yeah. violent but like would it be possible that we see that kind of intensity out here that's never that's never like you know the malice of the palace is the only thing that i can that's see crazy. where i could come, like because there's like cops like beating the crap out of it, fans you know, with like their batons like, it was the second yeah. time it happened in the last under two months yeah for the yeah. for the boca yeah. juniors from minessa i final there was uh, argentinian fans in the beach like right there in brazil celebrating like just having a good time and you can see just cops just coming in pepper spraying and whooping their butt like yeah and, and like now like it came back like the frustration still carrying over from that game and they come again and then of course the fans are going to get into it they should have they should have done a better job of splitting them up but the cops can't come in there and just start beating people randomly yeah, it's wild it's so it messed wild. up the fact yo. that they can do that is insane yeah. it's crazy yeah. Yeah. so shout out to Messi he was like no we're out yeah. we're walking out the field and like yeah. so y'all figure this out we're walking out the field yeah and then uh, and then the game actually started and then it was just more <laughs> wild like i saw this tweet here i'm gonna pull it up right now through the first 24 minutes played there were 14 fouls committed 11 by brazil three by argentina and there were zero shots on target so <laughs> they weren't there to play yeah. they were there to fight <laughs> that's like an mma that's they were MMA throwing match. hands yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, um, and argentina won so like yeah that's the second time they beat him in the maracana like yeah. damn yeah. like yeah. well like the other one was like the World Cup when they beat them. Like they beat him prior to that. I right. can't believe that they let the game go on after having Oof. such violence on. That's just the, another day, you know. Like, they're just like, let's continue. Yeah. Okay. That was. Where you know, were we? Yeah. We, I mean, we should have kind of expected that. All right, but I mean, you guys can play. Go, That's go ahead. Go wild. Ahead. Yeah, yeah. That's wild. South America is crazy. Mm -mm. Insane. It's it's another it's another world. They don't they don't play around with. No, they don't. Yeah. Um, Okay, yeah. So speaking of, um, you know, some uh, South America um, um, and Miami, I don't know. I'm trying to make this segue. I don't know if it's <laughs> if it's going. Uh, I, I, I'm following. Yeah. So Miami, um, take us there. Enter Miami and their South American 
um, talisman, um, <laughs> Lionel Messi, Boom. announced that they are going to uh, Saudi Arabia to play in a quote unquote last dance battle between Messi and Ronaldo. Um, Luis Suarez is showing Miami too. So it's yeah, be- so I mean, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. But um, <laughs> I don't know if I quite landed the plane on that, but you know, we're just going to pretend that I did. We're but, here. Yeah, what, what, what do you guys think of the. Uh, like is this is this like uh too little too late or like are people gonna watch this? Is, is it gonna be a spectacle? This year? Um, I don't I I don't know exactly when it's gonna happen, but but Inter Miami is they're they're doing a, a bunch of friendlies. Like we've seen them already do it. They just played against New York. Yeah, FC, yeah, yeah. And yeah. they lost. Yeah. Um. So they're doing a lot of they're they're milking the whole messy thing, which you know kudos. Oh, a hundred percent. Um. Yeah. But like, are people gonna watch a you know? past their prime like this is kind of this kind of reminds me of like the the mayweather pacquiao fight where you know granted we've seen messi and ronaldo go at it while they're in their prime but like now i don't know if people are gonna like pay attention because honestly i couldn't care less about what's going on in saudi arabia with that with that soccer league um but are you guys gonna tune in is this is this make a uh Mark they're on your traveling radar. out there. They're going to go to Saudi Arabia. We'd have to find the channel. I don't know. <laughs> where do we, where yeah. do we watch we gotta this? we got to get Fubo or, or something. You <laughs> Fubo, know? Better, yeah. Fubo better fuck, uh, hook us up or yeah. something. Like, where are we supposed to watch this? I don't watch any Saudi Arabia soccer yeah. league games. So. I think I'll watch it because that's the barbershop talk right now. Right. Like you go to like any middle school, elementary school. These kids are basically. They're still. Yeah, they're, Messi they're, or Ronaldo. Right, like, yeah. Yeah. And like every barbershop talk is basically who's the best one. We had Nathan. He said uh, he played against Messi, but he's a Ronaldo fan. Like, mm-hmm. and, I'm, and, I, and I, I will believe the younger generation will be more inclined to go for Messi than Ronaldo, just because uh, Messi still look, we just won the World and, Cup. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I, I'll watch just to, just because just to add to that conversation. Who's the goat? Yeah, yeah. of course I I, I would want to tune in. Um, obviously, just figure out where, and then also. Just going back to the, it's just like a classic rivalry that we want to see. It's just going to be interesting. Like, I'm going to, I'm not, it's not just going to be like, what is this Cristiano Ronaldo thing? It's just like, what does the Saudi league look like? What do the teams look like? How do they play together? It'll be an opportunity to catch a game with them playing in it yeah. and just see what they're all about. Yeah, to, to go back to, to Julio's point, though, the, the relevance that Messi and Ronaldo have with kids, because we we've done you know a bunch of youth clinics over the mm-hmm. last like three months, mm-hmm. and the amount of kids like it's Ronaldo and Messi still. It's not yeah. it's not Mbappe. It's not Holland. It's not you know Jude Bellingham. Like you still hear kids you know mentioning these guys, but for the most part, like you know the the goal celebrations, we'll we'll see practice goals. Shoo! It's still mm-hmm. Sue, or mm-hmm. they're doing the Messi, you know, like pointing to his back or pointing to the sky, mm-hmm. like. It's it's wild to because mm-hmm. you know we'll we'll try to hype the kids up it's like oh if you like Messi like make noise if you like Ronaldo make noise and then if you like Mbappe make noise the, the noise is like <laughs> it's like you know like crickets yeah um, when it's when it's not Messi or Ronaldo yeah. so um, that's they're still you, very that's like, how you know you're you're the goat yeah like, it doesn't yeah. matter like at that point at that level it's not about who's better than who's you know <coughs> more relevant to the other it's just like they're both relevant to the same you know group of yeah. of people and generations and i think their legacy will forever and always be a thing right i mean it, it kind of goes back to the uh, i mean to, to to switch sports and to kind of make an analogy to to basketball um it's like i remember like when i was a kid i was seven years old when jordan came back to the wizards mm-hmm. it's it wasn't you know like no one was i mean people still loved michael jordan and they, you know they knew who he was but it wasn't like that's the number one player that I need to like watch out for. Mm-hmm. Like we were still, I mean, I guess being in LA, it was it was Kobe and it was it was Shaq. Kobe dropped and, forty on his old dad. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but like Michael Jordan didn't have that like pull where it was like you know who's your favorite player, and you go to like ten kids, probably eight of them are gonna say Messi or Ronaldo right. today. Yeah. Whereas you know who's your favorite basketball player in two thousand three you were going to get, I think, a multitude of, of answers, or 2002, whenever um, Jordan came back. Uh, I think it was actually 01 and 02, it was the years that he played. But um, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't get Michael Jordan mm-hmm. for a lot of those answers because he had been retired for, for some years, obviously. But um, it's, it's interesting to see that they're still extremely rele- relevant with kids. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, we're, we're talking like six, seven, eight-year-olds that are 
enamored with these guys when you know they might not have even been alive to to see, see their, their peaks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, their yeah. peaks. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So some of these kids are now what. 21 they, they were born 2010 <laughs> no, like, no, no 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 sorry, 2000, sorry. 2000 2000 yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> Ooh. boy math yeah boy math <laughs> we tired we tired uh, this side. Yeah. yeah like it's crazy like 2000 but no they, they would have been alive because their prime was uh <laughs> i mean they, they're still you know like t through 2017 i think when Ronaldo went to Juventus, what was that, 2017, 2018? Yeah. Yeah. Around then. Um, I think that, that was, was like, you know, the kind of, yeah. the, 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 he had a couple of ni nice moments with, mm -hmm. with Juve. But um, still, like, I mean, you could still say Messi's in his prime, he won a Ballon d'Or. You know, like, yeah, like, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? But um, it, I think that, yeah, that there's very few instances where we'll see. We'll but see. It's somewhere. crazy how, like, some of these players are, like, playing uh, to the. Older age that you wouldn't see. Um, there's two Brazilian defenders. I'm sorry, uh, Pepe being one. Even though he's Portuguese, like I'm saying, like people are playing up to their 40 at high level still. Right. Yeah. Um, Messi still playing like uh, he's 35 going to 36. Yeah. Or he might have turned 36 already. Yeah. Um, still playing at a high level back then. Like Mor Moradona already had retired by this time. Right. Um, right. right. The Ronaldinho, longevity, yeah, the Ronaldinho, longevity is. Yeah. Is Ronaldinho off the was down by 32, I believe. Yeah. Uh, Ronald, Ronaldo Fenomeno due to the knee injuries and right. him like gaining a little weight but like he was out by 33 32 as well so mm -hmm. yeah. for them to still be relevant at 36 at 38 yeah. and like carry as much weight is crazy even lebron james 40 years Dude, lebron and, what lebron's doing is insane yeah. it's crazy he's playing against he's 21 wild, years old bro. and like they, they were not even like yeah barely yeah. born when he got drafted when they he's got drafted the king. yeah the fact that like there's a there's a possibility that he's gonna end up playing with his son in the yeah. league is insane yeah, yeah. You, you've seen that in baseball but baseball you can play till you're four yeah. Like, yeah the, the, Griffin, the griffies yeah. yeah but i mean to do it in basketball is 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 nuts. i feel like he's gonna try to make that the, the tech yeah the technology the, the, the science the steroids <laughs> and also like Maradona's a wild boy, you know. Oh, yeah, Ronaldinho yeah. was a wild yeah. boy, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, <laughs> like, no, he had. He had. They were no outside, rules. outside. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, he coked was, out some of these yeah. games, you know, Dude, he was real. doing it like in the game. Yeah. Like you hey, seen? Is he's that doing real? Like, like, see, he was doing key bumps out, like yeah. in the middle of the I, game. I, I, I saw that. I saw that. <laughs> it was a meme. Like, damn. Like, is that real? though? We can neither confirm nor deny, but there's there's a higher chances of it being true. Yeah, yeah. They had a Maradona song about him being outside. Damn. Like that's Maradona yeah. está rumbiando. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, he was literally li living the Sunday league every yeah, day, <laughs> bro, playing at the highest level. level. Yeah, at the highest level. Yeah, he was. He's, he he uh, he was the dream. He was the dream. He's the one that created the Sunday league. Sunday the league exists because of him. The unrealistic <laughs> expectation right. of bro, if like, he could do it, can I could do, do it. it. <laughs> <laughs> Why not me too? <laughs> he said, I could have been greater if I never found coke like yeah what a quote <laughs> that's crazy what a quote dude the, 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 and they had like the he was playing in like that fifa like drug say no to drugs yeah. game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, jersey it said drug free on it like come on like wow, he's buying that? Oh, the drugs are free bro the drugs are free he ain't buying nothing uh, bro his jaw was like clenching like while he was taking that picture bro like but the uh, crazy part is like uh, the italian mafia hooked him as a documentary he was like he got really cool yeah. with the Italian mafia. Right. I mean, he was like, playing in Napoli. They were giving free. They were giving free coke after games. He was like, Yo. "What's yeah. up, perrito?" And then like, "That's oh. insane." <laughs> yeah. That's a. This is a diff insane. different time. Different all right, time. P. Maradona. Yeah, these. Right, I mean, legend. He's yeah, a legend. A legend. And for all reasons. For all. Yeah, reasons. yeah. he was outside. Um, yeah. yeah. But any final thoughts? Uh, any. Uh, I would just say I think that just as much as the legacy continues and is still relevant with like Cristiano and Messi, I also feel like there's similarities to that there's truth to that behind real madrid and barca mm. i feel like i mm. thought that once ronaldo would left madrid and, and messi left barca i thought they weren't going to be the teams but they still are i feel like yeah. people still hold on to that the Clasico still like you know like very much um a, t a high topic of yeah. conversation and the and kids like are all like a lot of a lot of the kids that i've like encountered or have seen or like the first jerseys that, that pop out are like madrid and barca right. jerseys yeah they existed before the players and they're gonna exist after them they're still the two biggest clubs in the world yeah um and i mean barcelona is in a financial ruin but uh, that's that has nothing to do with messi <laughs> real madrid got bellingham and they balling but they all uh, injured right now uh, yeah. they're all in, everybody's injured right hey, now hey shout out to bellingham i'm not a madrid fan 
But shout out to Bellingham. But you'll switch sides for him. No, I'm not going to switch sides, but he can show up. He can come to he your side. He can have a guest pass. <laughs> he can be at your side. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he can switch your side sometimes around. Yeah. <laughs> I'll go see a game or two <laughs> for him. She'll flip for him. Yeah, she'll flip for him. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, anyway <laughs> side to side you know what <laughs> yeah um all right but i think this is a wild place to, to wrap up on um crazy. already yeah i mean we gotta talk about mls playoffs mls playoffs what what are we uh, we're recording this on a tuesday we're not Going gonna up? no games are gonna happen <laughs> by the time like we're gonna talk we're gonna talk who's, who's gonna what? win uh, um, uh, Barca play, i mean oh, <laughs> Barca see, lsc plays against seattle on, on Saturday. yeah i know we can't talk about that game because oh, it's gonna I be see, over by the saying. time we, this saying. comes out what's your, what's your predicted score for that game no comment <laughs> i will just leave it at that i'm not trying to jinx anything so somebody's gonna win yeah. Yeah. somebody's gonna win let's wrap it up, win. <laughs> wrap it up. Yeah. the team that scores more goals will win um for real so yeah to me i mean whoever outscores Whoever scores the most goals, I think, is going to win that game. So it's going to be close. Nah. If you don't score, you lose. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. A, it's a make or miss and You could take this advice or you could leave it, but that's right. where we're, yeah. we're dropping dimes here. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but this has been the Urban Pitch Podcast, the beautiful game of life part of the Believe Network. Uh, I am Ramsey Abushala for Julio Matarosa and Bridget Flores. Keep it tapped in. We got some some upcoming special guests coming, coming by the show um, in the next few weeks. But uh, until then, I'm we'll, excited. we'll see you next time. Bye.